I'm going to discuss about important concept in geomorphology, one of the big ideas uh, that is geomorphic threshold. Threshold is magnitude or intensity that is needed to be crossed for something to happen, for change to happen. Uh, a simple example could be if I want to move something, I need to apply some energy. So if I move, uh, if I want to move this duster over here, there is a minimum energy that should be crossed so that this can be moved. Anything below that will not allow me to move this duster. Okay. So if I'm pushing this, so I'm actually crossing that threshold so that the movement uh, is taking place in this duster. There are a couple of more examples that we will see outside. So now here we are, uh, we have two vehicles, uh, one is a scooty and the other one is a car. Uh, now I will demonstrate that the force required to move these two vehicles is different, uh, which is actually related to the critical threshold the minimum energy that is required to make these vehicles moving when we are pushing it manually. And now we saw that uh, while pushing the small vehicle that is scooty which, is, which weighs uh, around 180 kgs. Uh, it required less force, or less energy to move that vehicle, uh, but it required relatively uh, more energy to move this vehicle, which weighs around 900 kgs. Uh, so uh, what this tells us is that the critical threshold, uh, that is the energy required to move these two uh, vehicles uh, varies. So similarly, the landforms, uh, they are at different uh, stability uh, conditions. If they are more stable, they will re require uh, more energy to uh, make them unstable, whereas those which are uh, close to the threshold, uh, they will be requiring lesser uh, energy or lesser magnitude events to make them unstable. So we saw those two examples. Now. These two examples were basically in this what we were doing was we were applying uh, some energy to make it make the objects move. So it was basically extrinsic threshold. Okay? So the system was not by itself uh, responding or it, there, there was no change within the system that has caused that movement. Okay? But in geomorphology, uh, there are two types of threshold. One is intrinsic thre threshold, the other one is extrinsic threshold. We have seen examples of extrinsic uh, threshold. Now you can just imagine that the two vehicles that we saw, one was that small scooty and the other one was the car. Uh, you can imagine that these are two sediments. Uh, so one sediment is smaller, the other one is bigger. So and the force that we were applying was basically uh, discharge so in that case we can say so uh, to move that sediment which is at rest there is certain amount of energy that is certain amount of force that is needed that we get from the increase in the discharge so if uh, so in sedimentary sequences when we look around uh, we see that the sediment size the grain size of the sediment it varies it varies from clay uh, to boulders uh, so to move uh, these small sediments or to entrain them uh, in the flow, there is a certain threshold uh, that is crossed when this becomes part of that flow, they are entrained in the flow. Now this is extrinsic, so there is external force uh, that is uh, present. But in geomorphology what could also happen is uh, we can have uh, something, some changes taking place within the system okay the system may change say for example let's say uh, we have uh, I'm trying to pile on some sand okay so it will keep accumulating and then there will be a time when the slope will be 
very high and it will collapse to reset the slope. So that is the internal mechanism of that material. Uh, one of similar examples is of snow avalanche in which there is no external flow, force. Snow avalanche which is not triggered by tectonic activity or uh, by some climatic forces. In such uh, snow avalanches what we see is that these happen because of internal adjustment of the snow. So that is intrinsic threshold. Now there is one uh, landmark paper in geomorphic threshold. It was given by Schum in 1979 in which he has explained uh, different thresholds. And uh, he has actually clarified the concept of uh, threshold. Now I take this figure, uh, this diagram from Schum's paper in which you see that he gives a hypothetical relationship between the valley gradient and the valley uh, instability. So this line represents uh, the valley gradient, the red line, this the valley flow slope, which is increasing over a period of time. It is increasing over a period of time. And these green lines, they are the flood events. Okay. Now these are the external forces. Now this uh, line represents the geomorphic threshold above which this valley will succumb to either the erosion or the movement of sediments in it. The valley is having a low slope or low gradient, it is more stable. Okay, So any big event is not really uh, making uh, any changes in it. When it is at this gradient, it is still relatively stable. Okay, but when it moves to this point, then what happens? It is very close to the threshold. Any small or any uh, flood event will have a cap capability to make the valley unstable. It may start incising, it may start transporting uh, sediment from there. Okay, now here uh, you can notice that there are two issues. Either the valley becomes steep on its own as it is increasing the slope of the or the valley gradient is increasing. It may reach to that threshold and there will be uh, changes or it will become uh, unstable and the changes will uh, happen in the uh, valley. Or else it is very close to the threshold on its own it has not crossed that threshold, but instead what has happened is there is a big flood event that is pushing the valley uh, to cross this threshold. Now, this is extrinsic threshold, but when it crosses on its own, it is intrinsic threshold. So, the system is, is adjusting itself. So in simpler terms, if we see that, okay, if I take a graph, there is a line or the threshold below which, if your system is present below this, there is no change that is going to happen. Above this, the changes are bound to happen. Okay, and this will be threshold. Also, closely associated with the concept of threshold is the concept of sensitivity. Now, you can notice that in this graph, we are seeing that uh, below this line, the threshold line, there are no changes. Above that line, there are changes. The system becomes unstable. But in nature, it also happens that there can be systems which are unchanged above that threshold. Okay. Now such uh, locations or such systems, they are sensitive to any change. They are sensitive to any change. These are very important for us. Why these are very important? Because these have tendency to record any change. This landscape sensitivity is closely associated with the concept of threshold. Okay? 
So you can go through the paper by Shum and uh, develop this concept because this is used a lot in the field of geomorphology.